Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to be working on part two of working on this Trail Hunter Bush Hog 4400, I believe is what this thing is. Um, I purchased this off uh, Marketplace and um, in part one, we took the engine out of the back, put the engine up uh, basically on the bench, whatnot, took it apart, noticed there was a lot of things wrong with it. And uh, in this engine, we're going to continue. I mean, in this video, we are going to continue to tear into the engine, put it back together, get it running, and hopefully put it back in the machine. So, um, y'all uh, sit back and enjoy the video, and um, hopefully, we'll get this thing running. All right, so I was able to get this off in the plate. Um, I just used a uh, puller and just kind of put the puller on here and it popped right off. So let's go ahead and get this oil drain. Well, I don't know if that's new oil or used oil, but it looks like used oil and it's got all kinds of crap in it. So looks like it'd be a replace. Oh my gosh, look at all that junk inside there show you guys here in a minute it's like all kinds of clumps coming out of there what it was y'all check this out check out all that crap that was in there oh my gosh I'm so glad that I took that oil and drained it <laughs> how can somebody build an engine like that that's just amazing. None of that was in there too. This is a completely clear uh, container, clean container. All right, let's get this case popped off. Check this out. Look how nasty it is in there. That's why I wanted to take this thing apart. Look at that. Ugh. It's got all kinds of dirt in there. That is just horrible. Well, looks like I got a lot of work ahead of me cleaning this thing out. Screen's clear. This looks like the oil pump here. So, all right, let's start getting this case cleaned out. That stuff is nasty. Ugh. really high hopes for it right now they do sell re rebuild kits for these uh, motors so they're like 300 bucks I don't know if I really want to spend that on it I'm gonna get some diesel and flush this um, actually let's take one of these pistons out That went 
too good for it. Look at all that junk inside them rings. That would have made a ring stick pretty quick. Wrist pins look good. No play in those. Look how the guy had the rings lined up. I don't think I did that. That's how I just pulled him out. I would have smoked like crazy. All right, let's get this second piston out of here. Doesn't look too bad. Just dropped a bolt in the trash can. It's always good. Alright, this one didn't go flying, so let's look at it. Alright, these oil rings are a little bit better, but still they should be it's pretty farther than that. This rod looks okay. I don't see really anything wrong with it. Wrist pin's good. Y'all check this out. This is the original carb. How dirty that is. And all that carbon, you can tell it was smoking because it's all that black. But look how clean the inside is. I mean, it was pretty clean. And also, non ethanol gas was used. You can smell it, and it's turned into like a, um, like a varnish, but you don't have all the corrosion buildup. So that was good that it's only had a non ethanol gas ran in it. Okay, so I got the cam out here, and it looks really nice. No scoring or anything like that on it. So before I get this engine all cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and home these cylinders a little bit. Because, um, I mean, I'm going to clean it, and then I'll just get more crap in there. So, um, these little cam followers look like they're going to be fun to get back in <laughs> or like the, the camshaft all right so that's just a little breather all right let's go ahead and hone these cylinders out It's not stupid, huh? Huh? Check that out. Homemade. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. Some more power. Well, I didn't get on camera, but that thing was a pain in the butt to get off. I had to put some heat to it, but finally the heat got it. So I'm glad I took it off too, because there's all kinds of mud caked up in there, and that would have made it off balance pretty good. So, and then it needs cleaning up, and also these wires um, were rubbing. So I want to get. I think they go up under here. So. Also, it'd probably be a good time to replace the seal. So, all right, I'm gonna get that cleaned up. Yeah. 
Yeah, those wires are getting rubbed pretty good. Okay, block is all cleaned up, coils, everything is removed. It's an absolute bare block here for the most part. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the seal. I have a new one here. Um, the way you can read the seals by the numbers, uh, which on this it says 38, 58, and then eight. And that's basically the sizes and uh, stuff. So if you need to match a seal up. Um, I wanna point out one thing uh, with this with this engine. So let me start off with this piston here. So it had the arrows on the pistons, and that actually matters on two strokes definitely, and also on four strokes, and the reason why. On this piston, if you look, the center of this um, journal, or you know, the rod bearing here, um, not rod bearing, wrist pin, um, it's actually not in the center, it's wider or longer this way than is this way and I checked it with a, a caliper and it's it's actually different so in the you can read online why they do that I guess it's for to um, to make it more efficient or whatnot so it does matter so the guy that installed these pistons before had them installed wrong uh, the arrow is actually supposed to go toward the push rods on engines and if it doesn't have the push rods uh, to where you can face it that way it's supposed to, from what I've read, it's supposed to go towards the flywheel. So it would be facing, I guess, um, towards the back. Uh, that's what it said in the in the Honda manual. I actually picked up a manual for this, but I've been waiting like three weeks for it to come in. So I don't know what's going on. Another thing, <clears throat> when he installed these rings... He, I guess when he put him over it, he kind of bent this ring, um, so it's, I don't want it to like seize up, it's not a lot, but, you know, over time maybe it could seize up, so I'm going to take that, I took the rings off this one to clean all the, clean it all out, so I'm going to do the same thing with this, and another thing is he actually put the rings on wrong, I believe he put them on wrong on the pistons too, they say like the more chrome looking ring is supposed to go on the top, and the darker blacker ring is supposed to go on on the second uh one here so um so yeah let's get all that stuff flipped around and i gotta uh, spin these pistons around so i can get them in the right orientation and then we'll start uh putting this engine back together I did notice that um, one of these, uh, this top compression ring on this piston um, was one of the old ones. It's not a new one for some reason. I don't know if you got them mixed up or what, but I'm just going to run with it. Hopefully it doesn't give me any trouble.
All right, I'm gonna put this camshaft bearing in. Oh, sail goes towards the back. Installed. lined up. Pallet of craftsman stuff and a pallet of DeWalt. It's been nice and off free. Walmart truck and got, <laughs> ended up with had nine pallets of beer on. <laughs> I said, Pete, you know you can't sell that. You go to jail. So I don't know what how he's going to get rid of it. I bet you'll get rid of them up in the mountains, moonshine, and play somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Get this cam shot. Got our time and marks right here. Just line those up. No, he still ain't done. Now let's go ahead and work on getting this oil pump put back together. Grease all this stuff up here. I had just a small amount of some uh, gasket maker, just a little bit around here.
somebody messed these threads up. I'm just gonna run a tap through them. See if I can chase them a little bit. rest of them. So. something out if you look right here there's a number one and a number two that's your um your piston numbers and then on your valve your uh, uh cylinder heads you have a number one and a number two on them to match them up some valve grinding compound and we'll take our little suction cup here bit they're not bad actually the intakes are pretty good they had a ring around them so probably doesn't even need it but we'll go ahead and do it anyway what we want is a nice ring all the way around and you can see it's got a nice ring around there so yeah, that's good I want to make sure you get all of this wiped out of here that's probably good and that one's got a nice ring around it so we're good to go Get it all cleaned up now. I'm gonna do the other one. I'm just measuring the valves and everything. Book says 6.55, and we are right on the money. Probably got a little piece of dirt or something in there, but what's it say? Oh, 6.59. So we're actually right on the money. Yep, 6.59. And I measured the springs and everything. We're good on, on everything. So let's um, start putting everything back together. I got a, I ordered some new valve um, seals, so I got to wait for those to come in. And also, I ordered a bolt to tighten it up, so I got to wait for that to come in also. So let's go ahead and just start putting some other stuff on the engine while we're waiting on that. So while we're waiting on some parts to get in, Let's go ahead and do some work on the drive line here. Um, I'm gonna get these CV boots replaced and get them packed full of grease. 
I do have a CV boot kit. It was for a for a four wheeler. It's not gonna like the CV axle is not gonna work, but um, the boot might. So I might have to order some more boots for the axles and the uh, drive line. But let's go ahead and get one of these replaced and see if it works. Yeah, I can feel all kinds of dirt and junk in there, so I'm going to take these apart and uh, clean them up. Alright guys, we got it mostly cleaned up. Um, on this style of CV, what we're going to do to take it apart is we're going to take a brass uh, like a drift or something. And let me see if I can do this without putting in a vise here. I'm just going to hold it like that. I'm going to knock that. Let's see, it's already coming out. There we go. So now we can spin this uh, around and take all these little ball bearings out and um there we go right now we can get all that cleaned up notice which way these uh, go and where your spline is spline goes down at the bottom so see all that dirt left in there and get all that cleaned out Okay, now we got all our parts cleaned up and uh, got some grease. We'll go ahead and start filling this with grease and get all our stuff put back in and then we'll put the boot on. put back together here filled up with grease now I'm just gonna fill this boot up here and we'll put it together All right, there we go. I didn't have the right banding tool uh, for this style, so I just put a zip tie on this one. I'll change it later. There we go. It's nice and smooth. It was very free now. Before it didn't. Okay, so I want to add this uh, oil pressure gauge um, to it, and I have. Um, this oil pressure sensor and it cuts the engine off when the oil pressure goes low and screws in right here So what I want to do is take a T fitting Let's see what I got here So I want to take something like this and then Basically add this like that and then have my oil pressure line coming out right here at the bottom. So that way I can check the oil pressure and I can still use the sensor here. So let's do that. So in the manual when it says to install this uh, sensor, it says to use liquid sealant, like gasket sealant. So I'm just going to use that instead of like Teflon tape on the threads.
Now this fitting goes on this hose. It's this little fitting here. And basically it connects to it like this and then it goes to the uh, to oil pressure gauge. So let's go ahead and get the gauge installed on the machine. So I think I want to add the gauge somewhere right here. that installed um, so now I just gotta run this hose so it's protected don't want to have this bus I'd rather use a copper line but it's all I got right now and I gotta hook the wiring I'm gonna hook it up to the, to the headlight switch so for the light but um and then once I get the hose ran I can just connect it to the to the back of the engine so hopefully that works Got some parts in today. Some rocker bolts. Yeah, we got some new valve seals. Because they were missing on the exhaust valves, so that could have been why it was smoking real bad. threads all right so these bolts get torqued to 25 foot-pounds to the other side okay so we're gonna go ahead and get the valves adjusted there's a timing mark right on this flywheel and uh, your marks are on the engine here and an engine here also you have a number one and a number two and a number one and a number two for your uh, cylinder heads so make sure those go on the right side 
So we're just going to spin the engine over. We already went ahead and did number one. I'm going to go ahead and do number two. So I'm going to spin the engine over till I get my timing mark lined up here. Which is right here. There's a T. And there's also marks on the, um, the plastic housing that goes on here. So our intake here, oh, I just had it, there it is. I'm gonna do at 0 0.006 thousandths. And basically what we wanna do is just put our feeler gauge under here. Tighten those down to where we have six thousandths clearance on our intake and then uh, about, about uh, seven thousand seven and a half thousandths on the exhaust somewhere around there basically um so we got a little bit of movement there i'm just gonna get in there we're gonna take our wrench i'm gonna hold this one here just little movements cause a big difference so See, that's a little bit too tight right there. Right, there we go. I'll get all that tightened down and I'll do the other side. All right, so I'm uh, getting this carburetor cleaned up. This is the original carb. I got a brand new Chinese one, but I want to use this one instead. I want to uh, show you guys something. Can you guys see that little dot right there on that screw right there? So this is a JIS screwdriver, a Japanese industrial standard. And with that little dot basically means that that's what they fit is a JIS screwdriver and this screwdriver fits these screws perfectly um, unlike your regular screwdrivers so um, it's good to go ahead and get a kit of these JIS screwdrivers especially if you work on a lot of like made in Japan stuff um, you know these old Kaithen carbs or however you want to pronounce it in Maniki or whatever and they uh they just grip these screws so much better and then you don't have to worry about them stripping out. Okay guys, well we have all the, pretty much the whole engine put back together and I went ahead and painted these covers, I don't know if I like it or not, but it's 
done now. Um, starter's all cleaned out. It was full of dirt and mud and stuff. I had to figure out how to get all these covers back on here because none of them were on in the first place. Spins over freely. So I think we're good now. All we gotta do is put it back in the frame and get a couple other odds and ends finished up. But all that is gonna be in part three. I wanted to uh, have this all in part two, but there's just still a lot more to do. And this video is getting pretty long. So I'll see you guys in part three. Um, look out for that in that video hopefully we have it running and driving and we'll take this thing on a good ride so i might even take the three-wheeler um on a ride with it so y'all look forward to that should be out pretty soon so all right see you guys then